Welcome to this, the penultimate entry in the Black Road Sky version 0.3 tutorial series. Last time, we learned how to use a warp drive to perform an orbital rendezvous, and today we're going to put together everything we've learned to head to the moon. I've already picked up a contract for Collins Station. I've got a little less than two hours to get there. Oh, I, that might not happen. I'm starting out more or less where we were uh, in the last video, parked near uh, Canada City. Off the bat, I'm not going to worry about uh, which station exactly I'm heading to. I'm going to. I, I want to get to uh, Lua. Once I get to Lua, then I'll figure things out. Uh, so let's go ahead and open the map screen. I can click here to zoom in. I can see that Lua is, uh, I can see Lua's relative position to, to Tyra here. I'm going to get myself into the orbital. view and obviously I need to extend my apolapsis significantly so I'll want to point basically prograde but pointing exactly prograde is going to put uh, my apolapse is somewhere around here, which is not quite what I want. So I'll yaw around a bit. Um, what I'm going to do here is flip into boost mode. I'll give it a little bit of throttle. Just uh, make sure it's doing more or less what I what I want it to do. Close, not terrible. Throttle down. I head into maneuver mode. Yaw around a bit more. I'm gonna get myself pretty close to this radial marker. Maybe like right around the edge of it, and. Uh, Let's see what that does. Flipping back into boost mode. That's looking pretty good. Throttling down a tad. And all the way down. I'm going to make the rest of this maneuver in maneuver mode. All I need to do is raise my apoapsis at this point just uh, just a little bit. All right. So uh, um, beneath this mess, you can sort of see the uh, triangle representing our ship is pointing this way. We're moving around our orbit like this. Remember that you want to put yourself in what looks from above like a counterclockwise orbit. So if I'm moving around like this, and I get to the moon here, and then I, once uh, I get here, so I'm going to want to adjust my orbit so that I keep zooming around counterclockwise like so. I'll fire up the warp accumulator, make sure I am pointing prograde. And once that warp accumulator reaches full charge, we should see it begin locking. Once warp lock is achieved, warp status changes to ready. I switch into warp mode and throttle up. I'm not throttling up a ton. I'm at 30% here. Um, the effect of our uh, of climbing out of the gravity well is much more pronounced here 
so you'll note I was trying to show you before the farther you get from the planet sort of the slower you go and remember the warp drive is a time warp so if you would be going slower out of warp you'll also be going slower in warp just not quite as slow I'm gonna take it nice and easy coming here maybe I'll throttle up to like uh, 50 percent and what I'm really watching here is my SOI my sphere of influence I want to keep going until my sphere of influence changes to Lua which here it has and then let's get ourselves a close-ish to Lua throttle down to drop out of war um something I sh definitely should note I'm gonna zoom out here you can see now our trajectory on the orbital map shows us just zooming off into infinity uh, this is not exactly a bug it's a bit of a it, it, it's a shortcoming of the simulation as it currently exists it's on my list of things to fix your uh, graphical orbital readout as well as the numerical uh, a, a readout is based entirely on whatever sphere of influence you're in this is our trajectory assuming that our ship and Lua are the only things that exist in the universe what's actually going to happen is I don't know somewhere around here-ish uh, the gravity of Lua will drop off and will get recaptured by Tyra but what it does tell us is that if we do nothing we're just gonna blow right past um, Lou is kind of bending our trajectory this way but there's no way that we're gonna end up in orbit around Lua unless we slow the fuck down so I'm gonna flip into maneuver mode activate boost deflectors and just go for it and I'm just gonna watch the graphical readout there not bad that puts me in orbit around Lua I'm gonna deactivate my thrust deflectors I'm gonna get up I'm gonna walk back to this uh, terminal to remember where the hell I'm going I'm looking for Collins station so let's open up our sensor screen and see if we can find Collins station lock head back to the orbital map all right Collins station is in a very tight orbit around the moon um you know what I think I, I, I think we can do this I'm just gonna go ahead and engage thrust deflectors throttle up a tiny bit and I'm gonna carefully I may yaw one way or another um, radially in or out in the direction of radially in or out to adjust what's happening but honestly I think all I need to do is this I'm just throttled up uh, 8% remember you don't need to be perfect I want to make sure my periapsis doesn't hit uh, zero or below and that looks pretty good that's definitely going to get me within 500 kilometers well deactivate boost deflectors get the warp accumulator charging i'm already pointing prograde and that's great because i'm thirsty shift into warp mode throttle up reason to overdo it enjoy the view you know have fun and throttling 
hand out a bit here. Okay. This is a little bit um, farther than you really want to be uh, in a brute force situation, but it's not the worst. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, switch into maneuver mode, activate thrust deflectors. I'm going to try and use my attitude thrusters to move my relative velocity to, because I'm in thrust deflect thrust deflector mode, I want to move velocity to the positive z-axis. Um, it would be more effective, of course, to move velocity to the negative z-axis, but uh, I don't feel like turning all the way around. I'm going to throttle up, and I'm not looking at that orbital readout, I'm just looking at the relative velocity readout, getting z as close to zero as I can, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so at this point it makes sense to open up the sensor screen, of zoom in. You know, I don't think I've mentioned this, this is an important thing about the sensor screen that I don't think I've said yet. Uh, like the orbital map, this is a, a 2D from the top view, and so you're missing the third dimension. This line below this below the station is my attempt at giving you that third third dimension. So I'm gonna yaw around until it's in front of me. And that line is indicating that it's above my plane of reference, right? The line is traveling from the station's icon down to my plane of reference. So if I pitch up, that line will get smaller and smaller and smaller until I'm actually pointing at the station right around there. Still uh, way too far away to actually see it. And you can see we made a pretty wonky approach. Um, I'm pointing straight up on the nav ball. That's all good. I'm going to flip into boost mode because we're so far away. Throttle up. Let's do... Uh, I'm not really looking at the relative velocity, I'm looking at the distance to target until it starts descending at a rate that feels good to me. We were so far away there, there's no way that, uh, well, it's, uh, if that was our final approach, it will just be by luck. I'm going to go ahead and increase time here in the cryopod. And just keep an eye on this distance, maybe around 200 kilometers or so. We'll wake ourselves up and pay a little more attention. Uh, because what I'd like to do is yaw around. so that I can use boost mode to park myself right around there. I'm looking at the nav ball. Um, I am drifting away. What am I going to do? Stress about it? Flipping into boost mode, cranking her up. Got six kilometers to burn from here. Flip into maneuver mode. Use my translation thrusters. I'm within two, or uh, nearly within 200 kilometers. That's pretty good. So at this point, looking at the nav ball towards the station. 
Um, let's get it as close as we can here with a numerical readout. Always go the wrong way the first time. That's a sign of a true champion. And let's see, 200 kilometers. Yeah, we'll do it in boost mode again, or at least we'll do our approach in boost mode. I mean, we're almost under 50% fuel, so maybe time to maybe time to start getting a little serious. I'll make my approach a little bit slower here and uh, spend some time in the cryopod. Watching this distance to target readout. A good idea, which I didn't do, something you ought to do before you hop in the cryopod, is to take a look at how much time you actually have before uh, your contract runs out. Because I think we're maybe actually sort of getting kind of, kind of, kind of close. Didn't wake up here. Let's do that now. Uh, still got an hour and a half, so so not bad. All right, within a hundred kilometers, drifting our way, and at this point, the orbital map's really not helpful. Activating thrust deflectors as I approach. We can start throttling up to start burning off some of that velocity. I just want to get as close as I can. I can't get within a kilometer, which is usually my goal. But we can get within two kilometers. Okay. ourselves up a bit here, and I'll just use translation thrusters to head forward. Try to keep it under 25, just uh, for sort of in fiction safety. Let ourselves drift in. This is um, nothing new. Done this before. and close, align ourselves with the horizon, and we'll do our thing. We've done this before. Coming on in for a landing. Docking mode. Play landing gear. Really, just look at the velo get 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 those velocities to zero, and then look at the distance to make sure it's where I want to be. And it is. Uh, let's get this descent. A little less crazy. I like to. There's no reason to at this point, but I think there will eventually be a reason to. Make your landing at less than one meter per second. So let's do that. Cool. Gauge docking magnets. 
southwest entrance. And, uh, man, if you're at this point, congratulations. If you made uh, an orbital transfer, rendezvoused with the station around Lua, you're a you're a fucking spaceship pilot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn in this job. A load of beer to Canada City, and while I'm here, let's pick up another job because we're not just heading to Lua. We're also gonna get home. And, uh, you know, we haven't been to Tereshkova yet. 2,900 credits. Hit four. Hit accept contract. Let's go ahead and refuel. What we want to do now is get ourselves back to Tyra. Now, there are a lot of ways we could do this. You can brute force it. You can point yourself uh, towards Tyra. Blast hard, uh, stop yourself when you get there. That's going to use a lot of fuel. Um, so we'll try to do it with a little more finesse. And there are lots of different ways um, to make this happen. I like to depart uh, in the direction of the moon's motion. So remember, um, I'm actually turning in the wrong direction. Um, remember, Everything's orbiting in a, in a counterclockwise way. So Lou is going this way. I want to depart uh, more or less in that direction. So I'm pointing the exact opposite way that I want to be. I'm just kind of look, watching this uh, triangle hidden beneath the jumble of icons until it's pointing more or less in the direction of Lua's motion. And I'll, look, I'll explain why why I'm doing that um, in a moment. Ideally, you, um, you'd like to wait till you're at a point in your orbit where you're also pointing prograde. Um, so I'd the, the ideal place to make this maneuver would be around here. I'm not going to do that because it, it, uh, I'll have to First, I'll have to put 100 kilometers between myself and the station, and then either cryopod or warp around. And um, Lua's gravity is weak enough that it's not a huge deal. Um, the reason that I'd want to do it while facing in that prograde direction is because I'm not working against the uh, the gravity of, of of the moon. Whereas in the, boosting from here, I am. But I'm pointing towards open space. And um, Lua doesn't have a ton of gravity, so let's just go for it. I'm going to flip into boost mode, pointing more or less in the direction here that I want to be. That's the direction of Lua's motion. Quickly puts myself on a uh, escape trajectory. And I do still want to put uh, that 100 kilometers between me and Collins, and then uh, once we're at that 100 kilometer mark, I'm going to go ahead and hop in the cryopod, get myself to a safe distance for warp, just watching my distance here, once that hits 500, I'm all good. So, wake up, grab a brush and put a little makeup, and get that warp accumulator charged. Point myself pro-grade while I'm letting that charge. So remember, what we're seeing here is my trajectory relative to Lua. Uh, the UI here is not considering the fact that somewhere around here I'm going to leave Lua's sphere of influence. So, and we'll see that when that happens. My orbit updates with uh, 
with respect to Tyra, and I continue warping along in this in this direction. Now the reason that I like to depart in the direction of the moon's motion is that once I once my orbit updates here, I'm I'm way well clear of the moon. I'm far away from it and moving farther away in my uh, in my trajectory. Whereas if you depart in the opposite direction, um, once your orbit updates with respect to Tyra, the ship's actually going to turn around and move, because um, we'll be moving in this direction, and then it's going to flip around and start moving in this direction. The, 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 the thing to wrap your head around is that um, when I'm in orbit around Lua, in sort of a larger sense, my orbit is I'm in the same orbit as Lua, right? It's sort of dragging me along. I'm following it along and following along with it in its orbit. And so um, my prograded direction with respect to my orbit around Lua, if, if I, depending on the direction that I leave, can be exactly opposite to my prograde direction uh, with respect to my orbit around Tyra. All of that is to say that it's much simpler when departing a moon we leave uh, traveling from a moon back to its planet. It's much simpler to point yourself to depart from that moon in the direction of the moon's motion. This isn't what you would do in real life. Uh, um, uh, it's not what you would do in, in Kerbal Space Program. It's what uh, makes sense in this game, though. Um, and from here, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We can see what I need to do. I just need to lower my um, apple or lower my periapsis down to uh, some point near the planet. I'm just going to go do that with my maneuvering thrusters in deflector mode. Get my accumulator charging while that's happening. And not trying to be super precise here, just getting my orbit to tuck in near, near the planet. Like so. That's fine. We're all ready. Uh, disengage my thrust deflectors, just so I don't forget later. Switch into warp mode and let her rip. Keep in mind as I get closer to the planet, my speed is going to increase, so it's easy to overshoot. I'm at full throttle here. Um, you can see our period where it's we're in about a six day orbit. Uh, so if I weren't warping, I'd have about a three a three day long trip. This is making things significantly faster. So I'll throttle down as I get closer here. I want to stop near periapsis. That's great. And back into maneuver mode. More I'm pointing prograde, so it's just drawn the thrust deflectors. And I'm just eyeballing it here, sort of. Uh, circularize my orbit. Big maneuvers like this is a good opportunity to use uh, boost mode as well to be a bit more fuel efficient. that comes in, I have to just watch the eccentricity. There's no reason to circularize as obsessively as I am. I just think it's fun. That's about as circular as we're going to get. That's pretty nice. And, um, and from this point, I don't remember which station we're going to. So head over here. So we still got half an hour to get there. I think we're going to make it. Oh, that's right. Of course, we're going to Tereshkova. Uh, okay. All we have to do is open up our sensor screen, zoom out until we can see Tereshkova, lock it. Um, all right. So here we are. Here's Tereshkova. 
a few things we could do here. If we had the time and um, we didn't want to waste fuel, I'm in a lower orbit than Tereshkova, which means I'm going to be moving faster than the station. I could just jump into the cryopod and wait for myself to catch up here. But uh, we're, we, we're on a deadline, right? So you can see I need to raise my orbit, I think, and then I want, and then, and then I'm also going to want to tilt it, sort of. So I'm just going to, I'm going to blast right in between uh, my uh, prograde and the radial vector there, and throttle up just a bit. That's gonna that's gonna be fine. Let's get this accumulator charge. I'm happy with that. Should get us within our 500 kilometers. Beautiful. So there we go. Uh, seven of eight videos in, and we finally get a get a feel for what playing the game is actually like. There are three other planets to visit, and we don't really need any new skills um, to get to them, although interplanetary transfers do present their own challenges, and so that's what we'll be looking at in the next video, when you get tired of running between Tyra and Lua, when you start seeing contracts pop up for other destinations and you're ready to move on, I'll catch you in part eight. Lua's orbit is my orbit.